our Heavenly Father, you've made a beautiful day for us. But the day we're remembering today was not beautiful. It was a dark day. It was a gloomy day. It was a day when a supernatural kind of darkness obscured the land. It was a day when your son, innocent as he was, set aside his life on the cross. Our Father, may the words of Scripture resonate in our hearts today. May we feel down to our bones the horror of the crucifixion. Feeling that, may we respond with love and gratitude for all that Jesus did for us. We ask these prayers in His name. Amen. I am reading from Mark 14, verses 61b to 65. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. Twenty-seven, twenty-six through twenty-nine. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, the king of the Jews, they said.
reading from Luke 23, 26 through 31. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way from the country, and they put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? And reading from Matthew 27, 32 to 38. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above the head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Take your hymnal now, please. Let's stand and sing number 315, the first three verses, Were You There?
sense, a spiritual sense, we all were there. For the Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. The life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and died for me. Matthew 27, 39 through 44. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From Luke, chapter 23, Two other men, both criminals, were also led out to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him with the two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And now from John chapter 19, verse 26. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. I will be reading Matthew 27, 45 through 49. <clears throat> From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbathani, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes. To save him. I'm going to be reading from Luke 23, 44 through 46. It was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. The sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in the midst. When Jesus had cried with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he gave up the ghost. 
I'm going to tell you a story. This is Psalm had called the greatest love story, and that's what we've been reading. So,
want to extend my thanks to everyone who's participated in the service. Thank you for bringing your blessing. As we consider the horror of the crucifixion, it may help us to place it in a context that's maybe a little more familiar to us, something that has occurred within not necessarily our own lifetime, but certainly in just a previous generation or two. And I came across an article uh, that was written uh, exactly 20 years ago. And it raises the question, where was God at Auschwitz? Auschwitz, you may recall, was one of the prison camps that the Nazis ran and used for the wholesale slaughter and attempted genocide of the Jewish people. And one of the people who has written about that experience from his own perspective is Ile Weisel. And his book, Night, is his own story of being taken from his little Hasidic Jewish community in the mountains of Transylvania and shipped by train to Auschwitz. And what he depicts in this book is not a series of horror stories. Certainly there have been many depictions of the horrors of these concentration camps and we can think of Corey Ten Boom, her testimony, and what she has written on this same subject. But rather, it's a feeling of losing his faith in the creator, father of his childhood. In one tale, a boy is suspected of sabotage and is hung alongside two adults. You can picture that. And I quote, the SS seemed more preoccupied, more disturbed than usual. To hang a young boy in front of thousands of spectators was no light matter. The head of the camp read the verdict. All eyes were on this child. He was lividly pale, almost calm, biting his lips. The gallows threw its shadow over him. The three victims mounted together onto the chairs. The three necks were placed at the same moment within the nooses. Long live liberty, cried one of the adults, but the child was silent. Where is God? Where is he? Someone behind me asked. At a sign from the head of the camp, the three chairs tipped over. Total silence throughout the camp. On the horizon, the sun was setting. Bear your heads, yelled the head of the camp. His voice was raucous, and we were weeping. Cover your heads. Then the march passed, began. The two adults were no longer alive. Their tongues hung swollen, blue, tinged. But the third rope was still moving. Being so light, the child was still alive. For more than half an hour, he stayed there, 
struggling between life and death, dying in slow agony under our eyes. And we had to look him full in the face. He was still alive when I passed in front of him. His tongue was still red, his eyes not yet glazed. Behind me, I heard that same man asking, Where is God now? And I heard a voice within me answer him, Where is he? Here he is. He is hanging here. On the gallows. Twenty years ago, that story struck me square in the heart as it pictures an innocent losing his life, the hands of tormentors, evil men on an evil purpose set on that purpose by a single madman who wanted to rule everything. And I know that we don't share the faith of the Jewish people. We consider them our forebears in a sense because Jesus was a Jew and offered himself first to the Jewish people to be their Messiah. And after rejected by them, suffered a death on the cross to redeem not only the Jewish people, but us as Gentiles as well, to make us a church, his body. Jesus' death served a purpose. This little boy's death served no purpose, apart from the cruel hand of man. And I think the Jewish people as a whole would agree that the Holocaust caused many of them to lose their faith. They no longer believed that God was real. They didn't believe they cared. Yet here we are on Good Friday. We've heard the words that have described the horror of the crucifixion. We have heard the words of Jesus as he hung there on the cross. And if John the disciple or Mary, Jesus' mother, or any of them witnessing that scene had said, where is God? They could have pointed to that figure on the cross and said, there he is, hanging on that cross. And they would have been right. For there he was, very God, there for you and I. unscripted moments that make life worth living, right? When Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. 
They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion with the, and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. And Luke 23, starting with verse 50. Now, there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had been laid. It was about, it was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the command. And there we leave this look at the death of Jesus until Sunday morning when we gather for a much different purpose. I want to ask you, as dawn plays, to depart the sanctuary in silence, considering all that you've received today. And thank you for being here. Thank you.